Hello and welcome to the latest video in the Ardu-Copter Mission Planner series. Now, if you've been following along, uh, you should know what that is. This is the quadcopter that I've built as part of this series using uh, an orange cube, a CAN bus connected GPS. And in fact, last time we actually did the Maiden and it flew really well. Now this video is about collecting a lot of the common questions that I'm getting through this first part of the series. The idea is these first five videos constitute the basic section which talks about how you get to the point where it does fly. In the intermediate section, probably another four or five videos, I'll talk about how you do things like tune it, add FPV if you really want to, all those different pieces, and then probably an advanced section uh, well, we'll go into detail because I'm getting a lot of questions about how you do things like mission planning. And I think this would be a great little frame to potentially do that on. Now, before I get into the FAQ, a couple of things. First of all, there is like a time index below. So if you're looking for a very specific question, you can just click down there and it'll jump you straight to the part of the video where I talk about that. And secondly, if you follow the process that I have gone through with the previous four videos, you should get to this point with exactly the same result there are a number of steps that you need to go through. And if you miss any of those, or just assume they're not important to you, then there's a very good chance you'll get to the end and it won't work. Again, the wiki is an absolutely fantastic place to start. The documentation is really well laid out. It's some of the most uh, complete documentation that's out there. Initially, when you go in and have a look, it looks really overwhelming. But if you're gonna do something like this, save yourself a load of hurt and pain, put aside a bit of time, get yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and just read through the relevant sections. The basic setup for both plane and for a multi-rotor that we're doing as part of this series is pretty standard stuff. And it hasn't changed significantly in the last seven or eight years. So do make sure that you are doing that. So with all that said, let's jump into the FAQ and I'll cover the common questions and how to get out of trouble if you have these particular problems. This video and series has been made with the kind help and support of 3DXR. 3DXR.co.uk are based here in the UK up in the northeast of England. And for me, they're the go-to place for anything that's Pixhawk, Mission Planner or RD Pilot related. They stock a full range of Pixhawk style flight controllers, a wide range of T-Motor, ESCs, motors and props, and also have a full range of sensors for your Pixhawk builds as well, particularly things like the Lightware and Bennywake LiDAR and rangefinders. In addition to all the Pixhawk technology for both multi-rotors and fixed wing, they also stock a full range of radio gear from people like FreeSky and others, and also stock a wide range of FPV equipment. So if you're looking for telemetry radio, super accurate GPS sensors, Pixhawk, large scale UAV systems, then check out 3DXR. There's a link in the description. So the first question I'm going to talk about is how to troubleshoot arming. Quite a few people get to the end of the process and then can't arm the quadcopter. Now, don't forget that you have to arm the quadcopter. The motors won't run on their own. Uh, you have to wait for the quadcopter to have booted up for it to have a GPS lock, uh, for the accelerometers to all be calibrated. So you're gonna just plug it in and leave it. And then when the LEDs on the GPS are flashing green, it means it's ready to go. Only then can you arm it and to arm it, by default, you hold the stick on a MOTU transmitter to the low right position here on the side, throttle low, rudder right for a couple of seconds, and then the quadcopter will arm and away you go. However, there are instances when you do that and the quadcopter doesn't arm, you can't get the motors to run, you can't take off. The big tip I will give you with this is when you are putting the system together is do what I do in terms of the basic setup, do that all outside of the model. So you know the GPS is locking, the RC calibration is done, and then it's just a case of transferring it into the model. If all that stuff is done outside, you tend to have a much easier go of things. The trick is if you can't get it to arm, fire up Mission Planner on your laptop with the battery and everything ready to go on the desk, of course, take your props off, is plug in a USB cable and connect to it, and then try to arm and watch what happens on the screen, on the main page where you have your map and you'll have your artificial horizon, over the artificial horizon on the left-hand side, 
it will show you why it can't arm. It will give you an error message. If you use Google to search that error message or go into the documentation and type in that error message, then it will usually show you what the cause of that problem is and you'll be fine. A very common one is the throttle being uh, too low, particularly on Tyrannus radios. Tyrannus radios tend to push the upper and lower values of things like the th throttle channel just that little bit too much. So if you go in, uh, you can set the end point for throttle failsafe in Mission Planner to be a little bit lower, about 960 would be my advice, and that should be below where the uh, Tyrannus is going to push it to. Do make sure while you're playing with the Tyrannus that you do set your failsafe for no pulses. That's also another big tip. That may make sure that the flight controller absolutely sees when there is a problem. To be fair, connected via REST bus, it'll see when there's a failsafe condition. Pretty much no matter what you set the uh, failsafe condition to on your FreeSky radio, if you're using one of those, um, I regularly just reduce the end point. So rather than have 100% uh, travel on either side plus 100 minus 100 I'll reduce the endpoints to about 97.5 percent um, and that will normally get you out of the way of any of those weird RC calibration issues but make sure that you follow the process if you can't arm plug it into the computer with the USB cable try and arm the model whatever it is and then you'll see on the screen exactly what the issue is google that and you should find the reason for the problem Next one I get a lot is problems taking off. Now, if you've got your motors plugged in the right way round and your props on the right way round, then this thing should lift into the air, uh, as I did in my Maiden video. I tend for a Maiden, as it's getting light on the sticks, um, it should come up nice and cleanly. If it isn't, then immediately drop your power down. While the motor's running, you can gently rock the uh, pitch and roll and just see whether or not it's trying to go in that direction. The big thing I would say here is as you're building, make sure that you are absolutely connecting the motors in the right place. That's the number one issue that I see. Now, the big tip with this is the motor test function that's in uh, ArduCopter. Now, I showed this as part of the build. The challenge is, is that the ArduCopter test uh, a, B, C, D uh, doesn't, it isn't the same as the numbers that you use to plug it all together. That can be a little bit confusing. Go into the ArduCopter documentation and have a look at which is which and make sure that not only is the motor that corresponds to A, B, C, D turning on the model, but that it's turning in the right direction. If it isn't, you're not going to fly. Similarly, whenever you put the props on a model, there is usually some kind of notation either about the size of the props or the direction they should go uh, make sure that the props are going on with any writing on the top now with these props in this reference frame it's very hard to get it the wrong way around because they actually screw on but if you have a prop with a prop nut with that kind of motor you can get them upside down and uh, although it will generate a small amount of thrust having one motor uh, struggling like that will mean that it's very going to be very hard to take off so those are the big tips for that one really just be a little bit careful on your maiden flight uh, and just don't go for a big takeoff for the first time if you're not sure about it then just kind of rock it while uh, the motors are running just to make sure it's you can see it pull, pulling from one side to the other to be honest if you use the motor test you have your props on the right way round and the right way um, up you should be fine and you should get into the air quite cleanly. One final tip on that, there is something called MOT underscore thrust underscore hover parameter in the full parameter list in Mission Planner and that is kind of set for where the hover point is. You want that to be kind of under 50% ideally so you've got enough power. Uh, ESC calibration can sometimes be a bit of an issue and one of the reasons why you're struggling to lift off cleanly. So again, if you haven't done an ESC calibration but everything else looks right, that is also something else I'd look at. Next question then is about the best modes for the maiden flight. And I would refer you to my last video, the one where I talk about how to maiden the quad and how you do it. I always take off in stabilize, it's just using the gyro and accelerometer. Uh, you have to manually control the throttle, then I'll stick it in something like altitude hold, which is then start to use other um, sensors on the model and then I'll go into something like uh, loiter 
which should use a GPS and then hopefully try and keep it pretty solid, stationary in the, in the air, and then finally I'll use return to home. And those are the ones that I would recommend you use for the initial flight. The only one you could do, there is something called position hold, which is like loiter, but it's like a sportier version of loiter. But for the maiden flight, I just use loiter. And again, the way you do it that way is so that you're building on a known good flight uh, mode, like stabilize, and then as you're trying things like altitude hold, GPS loiter, GPS return to home, you're actually building and you're kind of turning on more functionality. And if at any point you try one of those other modes and something weird happens, you can immediately go back down to stabilize into a known good flight mode, bring it home, land it, and then go and check out what's wrong. Next question is about power distribution boards. Now inside this model, hidden away in there, is the power distribution board. That's where all of the ESCs are connected to. And then uh, that is uh, connected up into the PIX hook. Now there's lots of different options for power distribution boards. Uh, things like the PM06 is a nice solution if you're gonna do um, 450 size quads like this. I'll put a link in the description below. Lots of power distribution boards about. Uh, if you don't have anything specific, you can do what I did here, which is you can kind of put the power module in front of the power connector onto the power distribution board. That will kind of monitor the battery voltage and your current. And then that will also power the PIX hook cube and everything else. And the power distribution board is literally there to do that, distribute the power to everything else. There are lots of power distribution boards and carrier boards available for the PIX hook cube. Um, and also other systems from people like Holybro, uh, things like the PixHook 4 has a really sophisticated advanced um, power distribution board slash pinout board. Um, and things like the Durandal, for example, is, is, is a more compact one, where if you're going to use that with a multi-rotor, you're absolutely going to need a separate power distribution board. But I would uh, check online, uh, talk to the vendor that you're about to buy this stuff from and just get their advice for the kind of model that you're building. There's lots of choice. But again, I'll put a link below to that PM06 thing uh, if you're interested in building something like a 450 class like I've done here. Next question then is uh, about why does my throttle feel really sluggish in altitude hold mode? Now, this is something that I've talked about already in the series. And the way it works is that by default, in stabilized mode, uh, you directly control the throttle. So the position of the throttle will kind of control where the quadcopter is, uh, its height, it's a direct relationship. And when you go into altitude hold mode, the middle stick position will tell the quadcopter that you want to stay at that height. If you raise the stick, it will raise up. If you then lower the stick, it will lower down. Now there are settings in Ardu Copter for how quickly and uh, how slowly it will sink. Uh, you don't want to go too mad with those because you don't want to really overload your ESCs. But altitude hold is a great way to do it if you're filming because you kind of park it at the height that you're interested in and then you can fly it around and it will maintain the height. And then if you want to come down, you just kind of lower the stick. And that's the reason people, a lot of pilots don't seem to realize that the throttling altitude hold in some of those other modes works in that way which leads me kind of nicely on to the next one. Can I use radios for self-centering throttle? Uh, quite a few professional grade quads have this system. Um, and if you have a centering throttle, then yeah, absolutely, you can do that. You can fly it in altitude hold and have it work that way so that when you take your hands off the sticks, it will just kind of sit in 3D space, uh, perfect if you're going to be doing things like uh, filming or you building a camera rig with something like Arducopter. While we're talking about uh, camera rigs, one of the things you might have spotted in my Maiden video when I was using the uh, the loiter is that what happens is as, as the model's flying along and I hit loiter, that is the position, the instant I flick the switch, the GPS position that it's gonna try and maintain. And because the momentum, it carries on a little bit, it'll break and then it'll come back and then hover at that position. Now, that isn't great if you're gonna do any filming because it means that you can, you, you've got that kind of effect. Um, if you change a setting called loiter underscore break underscore delay, I think it is, if you set that to 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, it's a much crisper stop. Uh, behaves much more like DJI systems. So if you're building these kind of things for cameras, big tip, uh, change loiter underscore break underscore delay 
search for it in the full parameter list, change that to 0 0.1, I'll probably try 0 0.2 first, um, and that will make that slight difference. And then it means that the way it actually uh, stops is a lot smoother and great if you film it. Last question then is where can I go if I'm stuck? And I've talked about this all the way through the series. The Ardu Pilot Wiki is a fantastic place to go to. It has a brilliant set of documentation that goes through every individual step. Always read that before you start and refer to it regularly as you're doing your build and going through the steps. The series that I've been creating is a companion to that really. There's nothing that I'm really doing in here that vastly different from what the documentation is with the exception of maybe doing the build on the bench before you transfer it into the model i'd like to do that to make sure that if something goes wrong after i've installed it into the model it's my installation that's the problem i know to look at rather than something basic with the actual pixel cube gps or whatever else i'm using the setup that i've gone through here is the same regardless of what flight controller and what multi-rotor you're putting it on. So if you're using a Pixhawk uh, Cube, an Orange Cube, or if you're using something like a Hollybro Durandal, or something like a Matek flight controller, or a 765, or a 405, or an omnibus board, or whatever it is, whether it's a hexacopter, whether it's a tricopter, whether it's a quad, a 5-inch, 7-inch, endurance, whatever, the process is exactly the same. So just because the quadcopter is different from this, don't think for a minute that the process then is not useful to you. Uh, the way you set it up is exactly the same. I'd go through exactly the same steps if I was building a little three inch quad as I have for this 450. So hopefully that's been useful. For those of you who are looking at modern Pixhawk builds, kind of coming to the end of this first part of the series where we've covered all of the basics. My big trick is to not try too much, is not to put all the additional sensors and FPV stuff and whatever it is you want, is to get to the end of this part of the build in the same place that I am with just the Pixhawk and the GPS and all of the basic flight modes checked and it flying really good. A maiden flight isn't about putting on FPV goggles and trying to fly 23 kilometers. A maiden flight is literally what I did, take off, just check the flight modes, make sure nothing horrendous happens, land it, and then double check it afterwards, make sure nothing's getting hot, uh, nothing, that the battery's okay, that you know nothing's come loose um, before you move on and try anything else. For day-to-day -day flying, I actually, with an Ardu Copter, I only have four modes set on my radio. Lots of people have six modes. Everyone has their own particular way. But I will always have a stabilized mode that I can go back to if something weird happens. Maybe the GPS is unhappy or the compass at the field has done something weird or it hasn't initialized great. Um, I'll always have a stabilized mode. I'll always have kind of a loiter and um, I'll always have an altitude hold, usually those three, and I'll usually have an OD switch, a return to launch that will actually bring it home and land it. There is a specific land uh, mode which will actually bring it down gently. That's really handy if you're using a really big quadcopter. But for something like this, I would just set it up and use the basic mode, so stabilize, loiter, and probably return to home would be the three that I'd use on a daily basis. So thank you to everyone for sticking with it. Thank you for watching me build this thing. Uh, stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more detail covered. I'm going to talk about things like mission planning, adding FPV, uh, tuning and stuff in the next videos. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the Inner Circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.